Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation. I'm very excited to have with me Greg Paulson, who is the Director of Application Engineering at Geometry. So welcome, Greg. Hey, thanks, Chris. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Uh, uh, shoveling some ice this morning, uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, um, you know, working from uh, Zometry Greg's Basement Edition. Uh, so we're, you know, still for the last year, been working uh, uh, out of my setup down here. Yeah, <clears throat> man, the struggle's real, ain't it, buddy? I mean, it, it's, yeah. uh, that the weather makes it tough too. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, we love to, to get these these hero conversations, Greg, started by just sharing your journey with with our listeners about where you're at now. Absolutely. So, I'm, uh, where I'm at right now, I'm I'm the director of application engineering at Zometry, and it, it's it's really interesting because we do a wide variety of manufacturing uh, here, and when we started out. You know, we we weren't this company of near 400 people at the time when I, I joined on. I actually uh, was one of the early hires. I uh, I joined in 2014, and just to let you know, Zometry was founded late 2013, like like November December 2013. So we really were just starting to make parts when I joined on. And uh, before that, I had some background in product development as well as additive manufacturing. Okay. Uh, so. I learned about 3D printing additive manufacturing around in 2007 while I was at James Madison University. And I, uh, I was actually uh, studying uh, science technology after I had a business hospitality degree. So had a little bit of a skew uh, on my career path and my, you know, my thoughts and interests have always been kind of going uh, to different directions there. Uh, but yeah, I learned product development. And when I joined Zometry, they were looking for someone who could talk about 3D printing talk about CNC machining, talk about injection molding. And it was something that I was very adept at because I use those processes regularly in my, my previous career. That's cool, man. That's cool. Now, now you, you got a, uh, a rise out of our executive producer when you said JMU. Apparently, he's a JMU grad as well. So, uh, oh, Dukes. yeah, there you go. I won't hold it against either one of you, you know, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually went to JMU one time. We, I went to Old Dominion. And we decided to go to JMU one night. We left ODU at, at like 8 or 8.30. We got there around midnight. And apparently that's a really good time to get to JMU because things were really fun. <laughs> I don't remember a lot about that night. It was a lot of fun, man. But uh, yeah. It, so yeah, I'll, I'll, go on the, I'll go on the brighter points there. So yeah, JMU is, a, is known as a door holding school. Like it, it is uh, you know, it's a very friendly place. And I, I do think like it makes of, uh, you know, really um, – you know, really good uh, characters uh, out of the school there. Uh, but I have to joke about the door, ho door holding side because we hear that from folks that are coming up from like tech and other other places yeah. where they're like 30 feet away from the door. And there's someone that just kind of is about to go inside, but they're like, oh, I'll hold this for this person. And they're like, now I feel awkward. Now I feel after like, I have to speed up <laughs> because like they're just being so friendly. And I'm like, listen, I can get that door myself, but all right, all right, thank you, thank you. And it's just really funny to hear that. I was like, yeah, that, that rings about true. That, that rings about true. <laughs> Uh, so good, man. So good. Well, I mean, congratulations. You've, you've done some very well exometry. You're doing some cool things. You, I definitely feel your passion about what you are doing and you're serving industry and you're really helping people. So what are you seeing as some of those big challenges in industry that you're trying to close the gap on? Yeah. So uh, one of the biggest challenges is connecting um, people who can do, connecting capacity uh, with those who are looking to get stuff done. And, and that's the Zometry's platform in a nutshell is a way for people who are looking to get custom parts made. Uh, they go online, they get a quote, uh, it's instant, and they press buy, and it connects that work with uh, shops and services that are able to do that work really well. Right. And I, I think that the whole s supply chain need is really important uh, the more and more I learn this because I've been that buyer. Uh, it, as I mentioned in my previous life, I worked for a company called Prototype Productions. And uh, I did a lot of sourcing there. So uh, one of the things that I worked in was rapid prototy prototyping, hence the you know company that we did. And it was a high mix of work. Uh, so a variety of different uh, processes from uh, 3D printing processes uh, to some more unique ways of fabrication, uh, like dip raising and, and different types of welding. 
And one of the, the tasks that I had was just figuring out how, how and who can make it and getting quotes back. And so when I joined this company and their, their, their goal was to help kind of alleviate that problem, it was, it was uh, interesting because I came there with this headache that I had of being the person trying to buy stuff and get it, get it made, as well as like being someone who was a supplier itself because I also ran, ran machines uh, for, for our internal shop. Uh, so it's, it's kind of this mix, but yeah, being able to empower and, and connect and actually keep some businesses uh, alive, like keep them actually running and making parts and be yeah. part of their business is really exciting. I joke about my role as a application engineer. When people ask, what does an application engineer do? Uh, you're someone who talks and consults uh, internally and externally, uh, spending the CAD a lot of times, so that, that computer uh, model and giving D uh, DFM feedback, uh, providing suggestions on uh, how designs uh, could be improved based off the process or even suggestions on processes and materials. So you're kind of a consultant both internally and externally. Uh, and I live vicariously through my customers because I'm not a designer myself. I can design stuff, you know, I'm, I know enough to be dangerous, uh, but my, my job is more about what makes my customers' projects more successful and their success is my success. And that's that's kind of your role. Man, that sounds awesome. Sounds like you're having a lot of fun with it too. And and <laughs> how about speak to maybe maybe that J we'll stick with the JMU theme. Stick with the, <laughs> speak to that JMU grad uh, or someone who's going with it there right now and they're getting ready to, to consider a career in industry. What mm -hmm. what what advice would you offer them up? Yeah, I think it's really interesting. So my my career path was very different from someone who got a degree in the field and what they want to look. Uh, apply to and then they apply to that uh, degree field and now they're working in that degree field and they're continuing to go there till retirement. Uh, I've bounced around. I, I actually, uh, I think work ethic is really important. I think uh, uh, even for no matter what program you're doing, uh, learning how to communicate properly is a really, really important uh, skill set. So if you are in a technical science or you're in an engineering or you're looking uh, even like vocational machining schools, uh, learning how to communicate and talk to people who don't know your expertise is one of the most important things because you're going to be dealing with people at your work and your clients. And you're going to be needing, needing to explain stuff to them in plain English over and over and over again through your career. Uh, uh, one of... Uh, um, actually, the the owner of uh, the uh, prototype productions where I used to work, um, he always said, like, you know, I'd, I'd rather take a good communica communicator that I train to be technically excellent than someone who's technically excellent who's a poor poor communicator, uh, because that is just such an important aspect of the job. Mm -hmm. And I say that because when I worked at J or like when I, at JMU, at my uh, weekend job was being a, a wine educator. I actually was the guy at the uh, at the wine booth when you go visit a winery. And I talked to you about uh, the nuances, you know, the different uh, different white and red varietals that we were offering, and and kind of walked you uh, walked people through that journey. But it also gave me experience in talking to hundreds of people, uh, hundreds of strangers, mm -hmm. daily uh, while I was there. So every weekend I talked to you know several hundred people, all with different backgrounds, different experiences, and they're there. And I was listening for their cues and kind of trying to understand where they were coming from to, to change my pitch, you know, change what the discussion was going to be. Sometimes some of them just wanted to taste wine. Some of them wanted to talk about, you know, something more complex. Some of them didn't, didn't know what the process was. So we talked more about wine, wine making. And honestly, that's, that's what I still do. You know, it's just, it's just a different process. It's, it's, you know, manufacturing, it's 3d printing, it's stereolithography. It's, you know, it's something a little bit different. Man, that's great. And such a, it's such an underrated skill. You're right. You can teach the technical, but the communication, man, that, it's hard to overcome that. I, I think I think hospitality. Uh, so if someone who has, if you're a uh, a programmer, and you have uh, experience working in you know the front end or back end of a restaurant, it still is actually a perk. Like I still think it's something worth worth talking about. You may have a lot of other experience there, uh, but it does teach you about service, about uh, communication, and some of these people skills that don't always transfer through from just a technical school alone. Like you, just having that, uh, having to you know, deal with people, deal with difficult people uh, is something that's very, very important. Um, humility, being able to apologize uh, is, is you know, just as important as you know, getting the job, job right. 
No doubt, no doubt, and it's something that uh, it's 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 so underrated, man. I mean, it's a it's a skill, and if you if you get good at it, it will take you so far. And I think that that opportunity you had as the the wine expert, man, that just that was a wonderful training ground to to learn some of that skill set. Yeah, it's it was fun. I and I also get to say it's like my cool college job. Yeah, and, right. Uh, yeah, so that that was very good. I just thought, you know, on that note, I am a sponge, by the way, for um, the experts that are around me that have impacted my life. And uh, I remember this is actually coming from a customer uh, because when early zometry, you know, we were uh, taking on all this different work. And uh, sometimes, you know, as you're growing, like you're, you're, you're working to drive sales and sometimes something happens. Uh, so uh, for example, we we were running selective laser sintering, which is a 3D printing process in-house. And the unique thing about that is you could batch a lot of different parts and build them at once. But that also means that if there's a failure, like a power outage or something, all those jobs lead times are now affected because you have to re reset and restart that build. Uh, so we we uh, one of the things we do is like if that's something like that happens, which is rare, but you know you're, it's manufacturing. It turns out stuff happens, taps break, other, other things uh, can cause delays. So we go and we get on the phone and we, uh, we call, we, we tell every single customer, uh, even if it's not going to be late, we tell them it may be affected, just kind of prepping them so they don't wait till the ship date. And then we're like, hey, actually it's three days late. That's, that's not what we're going for there. Uh, but I remember talking to a customer and he's like, he's like, what really defines his shop is not when things go right, because you expect things go right, but it's how they behave when things go wrong. Mm -hmm. And for, uh, I think that's something I've been able to really bring through the leadership at Zometry is, you know, owning up to it, being able to notify mm -hmm. the customer when something happens and we're able to go and uh, discuss uh, not just this is what happened, but here's how we're handling it. Right. You know, this is, this is what we are, this is what we are doing. This is how we prioritize you. Absolutely. And, and I think that's something just really, really important. Even as you grow bigger and bigger and bigger, you always have to act small. You always have to, you know, you always have to make sure that you're keeping that, that service aspect. I love it. That's for, That was such great advice. You know, it, it took, take, it took me back to when I ran our shops and, you know, it, when those warranty types of uh, claims come in, how you respond to those, really dictated your future relationship with that client, you know? So good stuff, man. How about other mentors that sound like that, that client mm -hmm. or customer really helped you, you know, in that area, that way, mm -hmm. anybody else that stood out in your, in your past that had really been a good mentor to you? Oh, I, so, so many, first off, so many, it's like, I, I'd like to thank the audience. Uh, so I will say when I got hired onto prototype productions, uh, as, as I mentioned before, I worked at a winery, you know, I, I had, I was working on a uh, technology and science uh, master's program, but if you looked at my resume, it was all over the place. And uh, um, our, the person who hired me, a, a guy named Ben Feldman, uh, I mean, first off, he gave me that chance, which was really great. And then he gave and opportunities for me to grow within my position. So when I joined on, uh, the, the foot in the door was uh, being a technician. So my first year, I put together cables, I made assemblies, I broke out 3D printed parts, which is kind of like we call breakout, uh, kind of how you're cleaning some of these parts that are built in, built in these uh, powder-based processes. And I wrote documentation, like I wrote proposals and other stuff because he's also like, you're a good writer. So what if I just have you put together stuff for the first year? We'll see how that goes. And you help us write proposals. So it's just like, hey, you do mix, you have a mixed background. Let's give you mixed work. Yeah. But eventually I, I grew and I had the opportunity to grow there into running the rapid prototyping center at the, at the company, as well as doing a lot more than what I started off doing. And I was able to learn from just like a really unique mix of uh, people from mechanical engineers, to electrical engineers, to systems engineers, uh, to CNC programmers, to electronics manufacturing technicians, to assembly engineers, part finishers. And I'm thankful for every single one of those uh, experiences and, and the great people that really were able to teach me 
that way. Mm-hmm. And then when I when I joined Zometry, uh, the opportunities that I had with uh, with the, the founders actually, because it was just a few of us there at the time, Randy Altschuler and Lauren Serif, uh, who are the uh, founders and co-founders. Uh, so Randy's the C- uh, CEO and uh, Lawrence is the chief strategy officer at, at Zometry. They really emphasized uh, the service aspect, uh, especially uh, Randy. He's like, he's like, he could never call the customer too much. He was, uh, he was, every time I said there was a problem, he's like, have you called the customer? You know, and it was just one of those things where it just really emphasized. And by the way, now I'm, I put on my Randy hat all the time when someone says, well, do you think this should be, do you think they mean this tolerance after paint or before paint? I'm like, Did you, have you picked up the phone yet? You know, and, and uh, so we, so it is ring true for me. It's like being able to work with a customer service experience first and, and earn trust and earn business. And that's something that's been so uh, big on Randy's side. And of course, sales, you know, uh, that, that side of things. And I think Lawrence, um, he's uh, always uh, was, you know, just the, but on my metric, you know, when you talk about like how you act, he's like, would you, would you post, you know, like, like that behavior on the, as a headline of Wall Street Journal? If not, don't do it, you know? And it was always about like building, uh, making sure that you're always building uh, ethics into your, um, into your communications, into your work, into your policy. And I think those two have like a, you know, just had a really terrific structure that helped build some of the foundation uh, of our culture here at Zometry. That's awesome. That is so good, man. Now, how about when you look at the industry that you're in, are there any myths out there that you like to debunk where certain people may think that this is, this is what you do, but it's not true. Just, just giving you a chance to uh, knock something out the park here. Oh man. Um, I, I think zometry is interesting. Like, so I, I talk about this because again, it's, it's been, uh, I joke my, my thirties have been uh, working at, at zometry here. So that's why it's, it's so dear and dear. But it's a different model, right? Because it is a, a matchmaker and it's a platform. And there's always these questions about quality and quality assurance. Like, are you, you know, what are you doing with my parts? And if I don't know my part, if I don't know who's making my parts, like how can I trust it? And uh, and one of the things that I I will just debunk on the on the Zometry side right now is we we hold the quality standards. And so a lot of these questions are like, we we are actually the people that uh, are your vendor. We are the, the folks that, that do the quality, the service, the inspections, and we're, we're the ones accountable for that type of work. So we definitely, you know, have had the skin in the game there and we, we have receiving inspections because we have receiving inspections. So I'm not sure if that's exactly what you're asking for, but that's one of those, uh, one of those things I, we talk about pretty frequently, uh, at Zometry because it's just such a different business model, yeah. uh, versus, you know, walking around the shop. And by the way, I love walking around shops. Like I love, like right now for the last year, I haven't been able to do it, but yeah. that's, you know, being able to go to a shop like once, you know, once a week or once every other week and, and talk to some folks and machinists is, is my happy place. Well, I was getting ready to ask you about your happy place. Cause I would tell you, you just, your personality, you, you smile all the time, man. It's, just, it's, it's wonderful. I can see, I can see you love what you do, man. When are you happy? Is it, is it when you're at the shops walking around talking to the, to the individuals themselves? Well, first off, I'll have to say like, you know, my family, we have a three and a half year old daughter, my wife, like that's, that's my happy spot is us being able to, you know, right. uh, um, being able to be a family and, uh, and have, have adventures together. Uh, but definitely I, I'm a people person. I'm not sure you may have caught on to that. So I'm a people person and I love technical expertise and I try to be a sponge for that. So when I go to visit, uh, visit shops or I go to IMTS or, you know, other, uh, other, other trade shows, I'm talking to these other technical experts. I'm just so interested in what they're doing and how they do that work. Yeah. And I could just spend forever learning, uh, on different, uh, um, you know, different mechanics, different techniques, best practices, and that's, you know, that really keeps me encouraged, like talking with our customers about their applications, helping them, like I said, their success is my success. That, that is what really drives me in any career. Anything I do is about not just making them happy, but like kind of creating, creating success there. So like, I'm not just saying something to please them, I'm trying to create something, create a scenario in which their ultimate goal is actually achieved. And that's, that's really great because sometimes what they say and what they want is not actually what they need. And yeah. so you have to like, as a, as an application engineer, you t- you draw into your experience, your background and experts around you 
to help uh, help engineer that solution. Well, man, you're you're doing a great job of it for sure. And now let's take the uh, let's take the Zometer hat off and let's put the I know just, I know it's so let's hard. put the <laughs> now let's put the Greg hat on because I want to learn about you outside of work, man. So you you mentioned your family. So you got a three and a half year old and a wife. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep. And there's a cat that keeps on walking around while we're doing this podcast <laughs> as well. Uh, 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 but yeah, um, I, I have my uh, my daughter. She's three and a half. And uh, she's, you know, she's just really fun and, uh, and excited and learning about uh, all sorts of stuff. I can't wait till the world opens up a little bit more uh, because I will say that's been uh, a little nuts. Of, yeah. we, we have some preschool stuff open now, but it wasn't always like that. So kind of co-working with uh, uh, wife's upstairs, I'm downstairs. Uh, and then our kid was having mean, probably too much Netflix. <laughs> that that's uh, that's something where we'd rather spend that you know spend that time you know doing something outdoors and having uh um yeah. you know have, having some fun there uh, but yeah I'd, i i was an eagle scout as a kid so i loved you know hiking biking doing uh like spending time on mountains spending time in water uh, i i a lot of times we try to vacation in a place that's kind of warm where you can, I can actually go and dive underwater and snorkel or scuba. Although snorkeling is more my, like scuba was when I was younger. Now I look at it, I'm like, but what if that regulator breaks? I'll drown here. And so now I'm like, let's just snorkel. I like snorkeling now. I hear you, man. Yeah. So now where, now where were you from originally? Uh, I'm from uh, Virginia. So I grew up in Winchester, Virginia, which okay. is, if you think about Virginia as a triangle, it's right at the uh, top tip there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so you're from Winchester, so we do have a location up there as well of, of Eco, man. So very cool, very cool. So I, I yeah. figured you, I thought you were a Virginia native. I just wasn't 100% certain. <laughs> so is the rest of your, like your family still in the Winchester area? Yeah, most of my family's in uh, in Virginia, and I still, you'll catch me, you're like, where are you from? I'm like, Virginia, and, and because I've only been in Maryland for the past few years, yeah. uh, and so I'm still Virginian at heart. And by the way, yeah, my my family, um, uh, small business construction. Okay. So uh, my dad, who, who passed away when I was younger, um, and my mom took over a uh, drywall construction business. Uh, yeah, so very, very likely uh, your business may actually be pr pretty close to where uh, her, her business was in one of those industrial sectors. So I grew up around, um, you know, drywall, sheet rock, sheet rock uh, construction workers. And so this is just part of my life is, you know, uh, I, I, I want to think that I'm part of the crew. Right. I have a different role now, but I, 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 do, uh, I, I do want to be there. Very cool, man. Very cool. I'm glad we're able to make that connection there. And uh, how about what do you enjoy from a podcast, YouTube, books, anything that you that you it could be personal stuff or professional. Mm -hmm. Just curious on what you enjoy uh, consuming. Yeah. So uh, book wise, uh, you know, I, I was on a business book binge uh, for quite a, quite a while. Some of the most inspiring books that I, I had were uh, books like uh, Good to Great, which I believe was like Jim Collins mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Bill to Last was another one that he had, although he had another one that called How to Mighty Fall, which I was like, because eh, it's basically like, if you follow, if you're disciplined, so these first two were like, if you're disciplined, you'll be great, you know, like, just just follow these disciplines. How the Mighty Fall was like, basically, like, if you do anything else, your job, may, your your company may fail. And I was like, oh, okay, so, so stick with your disciplines there. Uh, but I also, when I worked at the pre previous company, um, one of the things we were seeing was uh, manufacturing delays. We were seeing things happening on the manufacturing floor where something was causing delays, and and uh, and you were always seeing projects where something like that that became critical. Mm -hmm. And those delays may make another thing in the CNC shop delayed because you had a programmer uh, that was backed up or something like that. And right around that time, I was uh, I was reading uh, the goal, which is. Uh, I will like, we'll, we'll put a link to the goal. I cannot, uh, I cannot remember the author's name, uh, but he, he wrote about, it was a, like almost like a cheesy eighties novel about manufacturing. Uh, and it was actually the baseline for what's called theory of constraints, which is kind of like the foundation of stuff like agile, you know, some of these software best practices that have now been incorporated back into manufacturing, the manufacturing improved them now that it improved software and they've gone back and forth. Uh, but the goal is one of those books that I keep on revisiting, uh, and and uh, now I just have it on Audible. But you know I've read it a few times, and uh, I'll listen through it at like two x speed just to kind of have a have a rekindling there. 
because it talks about you know, some really important concepts when you think about building a you know, manufacturing center and and where your your bottom line should be. You know, you you should be selling like the the candy at the front of the aisle, like you should be selling like your core business and and how you split batches to increase output and think about like shippable stuff that you could actually get revenue on. And at that time, when I read that, I felt like the person, you know, in that book where everything delayed, all these stresses was happening. And then when you like read through, you're like, oh, you know, so you just have to change your mental model. And I thought that was very good. And it's a very great read for anybody on the manufacturing end. Cool, man. Um, yeah. Pod Podcast wise, <laughs> by the way, I just like geeky stuff. Okay. Anything that helps me geek out. I listen to some uh, manufacturing podcasts. We were on uh, manufacturing happy hour. I'm also a big fan of uh, uh, something called 99% Invisible, which is just one of my go-tos because it's just interesting. Okay. Like it's just interesting uh, stuff uh, about uh, design, art, and uh, some interesting public policies that have had positive or negative effects uh, uh, on that. But that's, yeah, I, I'm just constantly interested in, uh, in the world. That's awesome, man. Thanks for sharing that. Now, we, we also do something called the lightning round, Greg. So uh, <laughs> random stuff across the board, whatever pops in your mind, let's just go with it, okay? All right. <clears throat> All right, buddy. How about favorite food? So everybody's favorite food is pizza. Let's just let's just not deny that. But uh, I have a special place in my heart for uh, chicken biryani, which is an Indian dish. It's like it's like a treasure hunt for delicious chicken and delicious rice. Okay. Now, what what's your uh, adult beverage that's going with it? Uh, Sam Adams is always a good All right. uh, beer for me. Sports team. Not too much of a sports person. So I'm going to say because uh, it's where I frequent, uh, uh, again, non-pandemic times, yeah. go Nats. Okay. Uh, so I, I love I love going to a baseball game. All right. <laughs> How about uh, all-time favorite TV show? Ooh, that's, that is a tough one. Um, I have to pass on that. Okay. I, there's a, there's a lot of favorites uh, out there. Uh, so you know, if you it depends on what age you interview me because <laughs> like, like ten years ago, I'd be like, oh, Star Trek: The Next Generation was a classic and will always be a classic forever. But we're in the golden age of TV, so like every other show I watch now is like that was great. <laughs> like it was just, it's like it's a so it's it's very hard to put a put a favorite on that. All right. Well, how about a movie then? Uh, so one of those rewatchables that I always have is uh, stuff like Shawshank Redemption. Okay. Uh, I think that's, again, it's one of the best movies ever, ever created. Uh, but I am also notorious for just watching really bad movies. Okay. Like, and my, my friends know this about me. Uh, and I'll, I'll watch them and then I'll watch them again. Uh, so uh, anything that's kind of like cheesy, uh, even stuff like sci-fi or horror, like uh, it's, it's something that is almost like like candy movies for me. I got you, buddy. How about uh, music? Um, music. It's so I, I'm really I really hang out uh, with '80s. Uh, I really like '80s music. Okay. '80s rock. Cool. '80s rock. Cool. How about uh, destination somewhere you've never been, but you you hope to go one day? So there is something there is something called the Tibetan Tea Trails, and one day. When I can take off like a month or two, I would just love to go out there and hike the trails. Nice, out there. nice, yeah. cool. Now, thank you. I know the answer to the last one because we we've, we've seen him pop in and out. But pets. Oh yeah, well we got our well, we got our cat Coco that uh, uh, has been jumping in. If you hear any random noises in this podcast, probably was Coco's fault there. Uh, but she's actually new. She's a she's a kitten that we we got, and uh, she's been really fun because she's our coworker. Uh, so for my wife and I, she'll switch between our desks, and it does brighten the day a little bit. And we I do live webinars for Zometry and other events, and her head will poke straight into the camera sometimes, and actually think it increases attention. That's right. Uh, so it's it's it, she's not a sales tool. Uh, right. Trust me, but she's there. She's there. I got it, man. I got it. Well, man, that was a lot of fun. We got to learn a lot about you there, Greg. So yeah. thanks for playing along with us. <laughs> now we call it eco ask why greg and we always end with the why and it's, and it's all about your passion so someone wants to come up to you and want to know what your personal why is you know what would that be the personal why is to build a better tomorrow i i really think everything we do we kind of where we are right now we can only do we can do very little to affect what our lives 
will endure. Mm -hmm. um, but we could do a lot to affect what our next gener generation will. Yeah. And I think that's that's something that drives me is you know how can we how we can build tomorrow better. Man, I love it. I love that answer, buddy. That that, re that really speaks a lot to uh, to your character and what you're what you're working on. For the listeners out there. As always, check out their show notes. There are all sorts of ways to get in touch with Greg, to follow him. I encourage you to do follow him. He's got a lot of cool things happening. And Greg, man, thank you so much for taking the time out with us today on Eco Ask Why. Chris, this is awesome. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Absolutely. You have a great day. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.